Hello and welcome to Cutting Through the Bull in the Post-Truth Apocalypse. I'm Ben and as always I'm hanging out with Mike, Hello. Claire hey. and Pete. Hello. And it's after Christmas, it's all over. Tear down the decorations. What tree's been come down today? Mm. Tear them down. Yeah. Jamie was like, I want to clean the place up. Mine will come down the day after tomorrow. Mm. Didn't have one up to start with. Nope, me neither. Yeah, well there we go, it is post Christmas. I guess this will be out on New Year's Eve, won't it? Yeah, something like that. On yeah. New Year's Day. So Happy New Year for when you hear this. Mm. Yeah, 2023. 2023, bring it on, bring on the giant asteroid. Oh yeah. Wonder how shit it's going to get now. 2022 was bad. Well, if we're going to get a giant asteroid, that's <laughs> bad. Yeah, and Bruce Willis is saving us now. It's really ill, isn't he? Is he? He's yeah. Oh, yeah. he stopped acting, hasn't he? Why? What's up with him? He had a brain disease that made mm. him start forgetting. It wasn't Alzheimer's, it was a type of it or something like that. <laughs> so he couldn't remember his lines anymore. Apparently it's got really bad. He's pretty much bed, He's nearly bedridden. Oh. Well, from what I gather. I could be wrong there, but he's he's gone downhill severely, so he's it's not saving very us. recent, then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, within, within the last sort of eight, nine months. Okay. Curvy jab. <coughs> Do you know if he had it or not? Can't say. Can't, I can't comment on that. <laughs> and obviously... Neither can we, because that stuff <laughs> gets us banned really? from YouTube. Oh yeah, fucking YouTube. No freedom of speech anymore. Oh, yeah, fine. It's all gone. <laughs> but anyway, this week, which it's come round as it happens, the New Year episode will be a movie episode, and it was the 1992 seminal classic, Brain Dead. Well, yep. Peter Jackson's second film to sort of come through. Yep. Starring Timothy Balmer, Diana Pellava, Elizabeth Moody, Ian Watkin, Brenda Kendall and others. Nobody big really then. No one, no. Obviously Peter Jackson makes a cameo because it's his baby. <laughs> Let's thank some of the returning listeners and then we'll get into that. And if you haven't seen Brain Dead, there's a few. We'll give you a bit of trivia before we get into it. Big one is obviously most fake blood ever used in a movie. I don't think that's been surpassed yet. <laughs> right, so let's have a list. I'll go through some places where we can listen to. I'll read a selection out. Frankfurt and Maine in Germany, Madrid in Spain, Cologne in Germany, Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates, Perryville, Missouri, Ilyescas, I think that is, in Spain, Baldwin City, Kansas, Boardman, Oregon, Ashburn, Virginia, Trenton, New Jersey, Guadalajara, Spain, and Belfast, UK, still top. Thank, Thank you, you very listening. much. Yeah. Cheers, buddy. And if you want to follow us on Facebook, by all means, you can. It is Cutting Through the Ball in the Post Truth Apocalypse. And on YouTube, we are Apocalypse Ball. And we are Cutting Through the Ball in the PTA on SoundCloud and other podcasting platforms. This film starts. It's Skull Island. Isn't that where they found King Kong? It is. Yes, Island. it is. In 1957, this film is set around the late 50s, New Zealand, so yeah. it's quaint and post-war. There's a monkey in a wooden crate being held by two men, one a sort of localish kind of chap, the other a New Zealand zoo official, and it is a shitty wooden crate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very shitty wooden crate. Yeah, well, it's above a cage, is it a cage? They are surrounded by tries and with spears. The guy who's like winning, the localish guy, is like, hey... This monkey needs to stay here, man. It's creeping me out. I don't like it. It's a rat monkey. Yeah. And it's horrible. It is. It's an horrible looking thing. Anyway, these tribesmen, the semi painted guys, rock up and free the rat monkey. We don't get to we, see you it. Don't, you don't see it. We yet. don't see we don't, it yet. We don't, but we don't know it's a rat monkey it's a, yet. Well, they call it a rat monkey, and the first thing I'm thinking of is my god, it's a rat, but it looks like a monkey. <laughs> well, apparently. Giant rats scuttled off the slave ships and raped all the tree monkeys <laughs> from, to produce this thing. That just makes it that horrific, it is what it does. And they call it the Simeon Raticus. Mm. That they do, that is its Latin name. But still, that origin story is horrific. <laughs> yeah. Nightmarish, isn't it? <laughs> Giant, vicious rats jumping off a boat and raping all the little monkeys. Yeah, that's just. And then weirdly, the genetics. Merging because that can't happen. No, it can't. It did in this case. Well, it, well, yeah. Poetic license, isn't it? Well, it's not. This wasn't a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> no, Pete. There wasn't a 1956 zombie outbreak in New Zealand. I genuinely thought this was a documentary. <laughs> Although weirdly, 
I guess as a little side fact, this film does have a place in the Zombie Survival Guide written by Max Brooks where he discusses the lawnmower as a viable zombie killing weapon. Good. He says it's not viable because you've got to carry around a lot of petrol yeah. and it's quite yeah. heavy. Yeah. But, uh, he but, still, lawnmower. but still, in a pinch, if you need it. Yeah. It's the most famous scene in this film, isn't it? Absolutely. Now, for some reason, New Zealand Zoo officials carry Sten some machine guns and he scares off the tires who are firing over their heads and runs off with the monkey and leaving these little mate behind who's, who's he's like you know you want the money you help me with this he's like nah you shouldn't let that monkey leave the island nah no 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 my friend I'm taking this monkey <laughs> and it bites him they get onto a jeep they're Indiana Jones style a bit here aren't they yeah There's throwing the spears throwing the spears Throwing the spears so badly. <laughs> you see how far they threw them? It literally went six foot in one case. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's not Indiana Jones. <laughs> the monkey bites the zoo official and scratches him, bites him. And they get in there. Oh, my God. Zingaya, you've Zingaya. got the bite. you got the bite? you got the bite. <laughs> and bam, they chop his fucking hand off. Yeah, <laughs> they do. And then he notices he's got another bite on his on his arm, like top of his shoulder on his other arm. So ah, he has another bite. Zingaya, <laughs> and then they chop his arm off, and then they notice he's got a scratch on his head. He has a scratch. <laughs> and then they Zingaya. It, it cuts as they kind of chop into his head. Yeah, and that's it then. End of scene. Yeah, but at least yeah. they knew how to deal with a zombie outbreak. Yeah, quash it fucking instantly. Mm. Quite an action-packed uh, first few minutes of this film, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And don't get me wrong, it's far from non-gruesome as well, because you do see them chop off the pretty poor rubber prosthetic hand, but it made Claire go, oh! like, it, it made her gasp at it as, as you see this big fat blade chop into an arm, essentially, that does flop about and... Blood gushes out and that. And I did glance at Claire a few times during the film and see her <laughs> face of disgust. <laughs> <laughs> My personal favourite was Unit 731 when mm. that woman's hands got degloved and Claire screamed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the guy, the monkey, then he just put on a plane in the same shitty wooden cage that's just held together with some string, isn't it? Let's face it. on the plane. They're the guys, the, guy, the ones who are driving the Jeep, and they're like, we shouldn't let that, island, that monkey leave the island, leave here, and they're like, nah, nah, money. Yeah, let's take the money and run. We're then introduced to this pack eater, but for some reason in my notes, I kept writing fuck eater, because I misheard her name on the on the first one, so I just kept writing fuck eater. <laughs> but she's there, they're like an like immigrant family, a Hispanic family living in New Zealand. She's quite hot. She's, she's very hot, she's very cute. They run a shop. She fancies a delivery boy called Roger. So the old woman texts her in the back and says, I'll do your tarot cards. And now Alistair Crowley's Thoth set of tarot cards. Thoth. Thoth. <laughs> yes, the crazy card lady I wrote. <laughs> and and typically she had the obvious odd coloured eyes. <laughs> some, some witchy kind of woman. You mean like the one out of Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves? Yeah, but there's, well, there's been so many of them, which is like which kind she of She was wearing all black as well, wasn't depicted she? Depicted yeah. with one blue eye and one dark eye. There's quite a few stereotypes in this film, isn't there? Yeah. There's a lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot, in all fairness. So she cuts the deck, and it's Alistair Crowley's deck, which I kind of like. I'm a big fan of Crowley. And she draws the Queen of Cups, the Knight of Swords, and the Star and Moon, and her grandmother's like, ah, oh, don't worry. You're going to have one romance, it'll last forever. And then she sees Lionel, who I think is like the New Zealand Frank Spencer from Some Mothers Do Have Her, which yeah. is a classic British sitcom. Well, look at how the dad was just casually eating his food and he's like, oh, not all this shit again. <laughs> he's like, she's obviously had a love in the past. <laughs> you know, they've been doing the tarot cards and that, and he's just like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he knocks over her stuff and she sees the star on the moon and, and, and what he's knocked off, and therefore he's the one. He's her true love, and she set her to pursue him. Mm. And she does. She, she, she hides tri- some cards from her, doesn't she? Yeah, she does. The grandmother hides some cards. Uh, s- oppression was one of them. It was the first one that she kind of, you saw that she kind of like hid yeah. away. And the, the the girl, and she even said, "This bad, yes, but it was all kind of like hushed and brushed aside." Yeah. And that was like the last of that for that yeah. moment, anyway. Yeah. And then some other cards come later, and she's just looking mm. at them. 
failure, death. debauch, yeah, yeah, defeat, it. death. Not good cards. No, <laughs> no, they're not ones you'll pull out, are they? No. No, if you're into tarot at all, you probably know that most of those cards are pretty negative. Yeah. I mean, I thought even the negative cards could. Could be, yeah. Positive. Yeah, but this is the thoth death. Could mean, like, we don't know about that. It could mean it, like. Death doesn't necessarily mean death, does it? It mean like death of a like a negative relationship or something. Or a new no, career or something. But I like certainly that. think when the certain cards come out together. I don't know. I've never done tarot. Um, I, don't, I don't really understand. But we it. also don't know that what the the Crowley Thoth deck is about. That's something completely different. That's developed by him. So who knows? We're not we're not devotees of Th- Thalema, sadly. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Do what thou wilt. Is the whole of the law. That's that's the I like that idea. Just do what you want. It's dangerous. It is dangerous. <laughs> but that's why you have your, your own sense. You know, do what you want, but within some reason. people haven't. No, that isn't stipulated on there, is it? It's it isn't. It's implied. It's it implied. implied. It's the golden rule. It's implied. implied. Anyway, Fakita tricks him into taking on his aid to the zoo after delivering his shopping, and this is quite going quite well, isn't it? Well, this is whether you meet you. Beforehand, you meet the mum for the first time. Oh, we do, yeah. Lionel brandishing a big knife. Lionel's mum's a bit crazy. Crazy. What's the, the mum's name from? Oh God, what is it? What's the horror movie franchise with the weird mother? Psycho. Psycho. I, as soon as I saw her, I thought Psycho. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we go with that, I guess. She's she's like Norman Bates's mum. Mm. No one loves you like your mother. Yeah, he, he, he's <laughs> you know that like, mummy's boy in the sense yes. that she's smothered him into being one and you know that the fact that she makes she he's lionel is basically seymour skinner from the simpsons yeah yeah so no mother not the sailor suit again i told you i'm too big for it now (laughs) (laughs) you know that lionel's been wearing sailor suits at some point (laughs) and the the date at the zoo so is is going very well it's going really well lionel's mother though is is going to spy on him we do have a bit of a flashback here where uh, Lionel sees something like a pond and has a bit of a freak out, doesn't he? Yeah, he's yeah. terrified of water. He's been fed this tale that he fell in the pier as a child and his dad died to save him but was drowned after saving him and and obviously his mother's held that against him, hasn't she? That's how she's beating him down into this yeah. weak, oppressive man who's cooking all the dinners and cleaning the house. But then, you know, he says all that to, to fuck eat her. And then she's like, oh, look, little monkeys. <laughs> and you're like, well, that's one way to get out of that situation, I guess. <laughs> and this is where we see the rat monkey. And it's fucking vicious. It is. Kills the other monkey by sticking his hand through the, cl- the cage doors. Then rips its arm off. Proceeds to eat it. And he eats it. It's fucking horrible. And she gets bit by the rat monkey. And she's like, backs up against the cage to kind of spy on... On Lionel. Lionel. Lionel's mum, yeah. She's mm. hiding in the bushes, isn't uh, she? Yeah, she's probably sneaking about. Yeah. But it's sneaking in the wrong place because that dirty little rat monkey thought, mmm, yum yum. Yum yum, I'm in her hand. And she crushes its fucking skull sadistically, <laughs> doesn't she, with her, yeah. with her flat... What do you call that time? She's like a flat heel? Yeah, a flat kitten heel. She was a flat kitten heel? Yeah. Well, you learn something every mm-hmm. day. She crushes that skull. The eyes pop out and everything. It's really <laughs> yeah. quite gruesome. Whole film's gruesome, isn't it? <laughs> Everybody at the zoo sort of like open mouth like, <gasps> what? You don't go to the zoo and kill the animals, do you? <laughs> no, you don't tend to. It's not a, I guess in that scenario it's kind of justified, but you could have done it a bit quicker. <laughs> uh, Obviously, Fakita for, for has, has Lionel's jacket and he takes his mother home. I'm sorry, I've got to go. She turns up at the house lady and gives him his jacket back, climbs up to his balcony. It's a lovely house, by the way. Mm. Fantastic house. And he's like, I'm sorry, I can't see anymore. Then kisses her. Yeah. And this is a recurring theme throughout the film. I think he at least says that to her twice more and then kisses her and says, ah, oh, fuck it, why not? Poor old Lionel. No one loves him like his mother. But his mother's getting Zingaya. That's the issue. She's in bed. She's arms bandaged up. She's starting to deteriorate, isn't she? Deteri- deteriorate is a... It's definitely a word I'd use. Mm. Call the doctor, didn't they? Because that wound definitely looks infected. Mm. Especially when it's spurting pink puss over the walls. <laughs> yeah. And over the picture of her husband and everything. Yeah, that's not good, is it? 
you know, she's not in a good state. She's obviously being ravaged by, by whatever disease is flooding through her system, as well as the heavily infected wound in her arm. But oh dear, who happens to show up to the house? It's the president of the Ladies' Welfare League, which mm. his mother has now been elected treasurer of. Mm. They're coming to dinner. They're coming to dinner. She's almost like she's like leprosy at this point. Like a bit of flap of skin falls off in her cheek and a lion has to glue it back on yeah, for her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's trying to get ready for this dinner, like, like hysterically, isn't she? Yeah, and then... It's this weird scenario where Lionel cooks everyone like a fry-up, basically. What, steak, mash and beans? Steak, mash and beans, that's not bad. I'd have that. Followed by custard. The ch- her wound spurts into the custard as the chap, the husband of the, the president of the Ladies' Welfare League, and he just starts saying, oh, that's good custard, that is all. Oh, rich and creamy, just like I like yeah. it. That made me feel a little bit sick. <laughs> but that guy's an idiot, because at one point, I mean, remember this is set in 1956, and at one point he thumps the table and says, what we need is another war! <laughs> and you're like, you only just come out of one, you daft prick! Unbelievable. So he's obviously a bit of a knob. Her ear just pops into her own custard. I mean, she's, to be fair to Lionel's mum, she's gamely trying to carry on this charade that she's okay, isn't she? <laughs> she's, she she's trying it on. She eats her own ear. Then she, she eats her own ear. Earring go. But, I mean, at that point, she's still trying to... She's slurring her speech, and she, she's... And then at one point, she's just sort of, like, on repeat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was it she keeps saying? I forget now. Annual meeting, <laughs> annual, annual, annual meeting. meeting, and then he's like, yes. And the best of it is, she's acting like someone who's like 103 years old. And the, and the, late, and the president's like, oh yeah, I'm, we needed younger blood. I'm glad we voted you on. Yeah. And she, she's got, either got fucking dementia, or she's, or she's a lot older than she's letting on. <laughs> so at one point, does anyone going to say, I'm not well? Yeah. And when she's here, that's it, the little woman wants to leave, doesn't she? Yeah. This point, Fakita arrives and says that her grandmother's some dark forces massing against Lionel. So it's seen in the cards. She brought Fernando the dog with her. Yeah. Her little her German shepherd. Who is Ian? Well, he's, he ran off up the stairs. Yeah, subsequently he ran, ran eaten off. very quickly. Yeah, and they rush in, and they and she's like, Fernando, your mother ate my dog. And she's got the tail hanging out of her yeah. mouth like some kind of weird furry gag. And Lionel pulls it out, and he's like, not all of it. Oh, so you're yeah, like, you know what? R.I.P. Fernando, just a friendly German shepherd who went to the wrong room. Yeah. Got most, ate by an old lady zombie. Most traumatising death of the film for yeah. me, that was. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. In his callous way of just saying, oh, he's not eating all of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right, Lionel. Because the tail's the main part of the dog, isn't it? Not the head and the legs and the torso. Just the tail. I'll keep that tail. I'll take it home. I'll put some water down and some food down for it. And I don't know if it jumps up onto my lap at night and does against me. And she doesn't seem so sad at the death. She doesn't there. know, does she? No. The next no. day, she's happy and smiling and laughing. She's, she's, Whimsical. She's whimsical, yeah. Yeah, that's a word for her. Yeah, we're like. isn't she? That's true. And the cards. Yeah, but once you've seen the other cards come out, the once dark you've forces. seen your potential mother-in-law eating your dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a bit of a kill the romance in it. Just, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to continue dating a girl if her mum's at my dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the point where they think we should bring the doctors. Yeah. Don't so, so fix you so <laughs> So then they get a nurse. No! So the nurse comes round. The nurse comes round. Yeah. She didn't eat my dog. <laughs> but, uh, she ate the dog, not still my dog. What's a shame, though, is this nurse doesn't know what she's walking into. No. Obviously, she goes over to this old lady, takes one look at her and goes, we need to get you to hospital. Goes over to the phone to ring for the hospital. Next thing you know, the mother takes her last breath. Lionel holding the mother, kind of, oh, nurse... She comes back over and says, oh, she's dead. That's about it, really. She turns around. Next thing you know, she's back awake again. And she rips her fucking head nearly... Nearly off. Nearly off, just leaving the back of her neck attached. Mm -hmm. So this poor nurse dies instantly almost and comes back as a zombie with a head that hangs off. 
Have you noticed that they all turn very quick? Very quick. Yeah. It's almost instant. Yeah. Even from a bite, within moments, they're zombied. So mom is zombied now at this point as well. Nurse is zombied. He has a bit of a scuffle with them both. They have a fight between them. Yeah. And the Archer's yeah. radio program is on. Is playing <laughs> yeah. at the same time. The Archer's it? is a constant theme in this this film. I don't. And it syncs up with the action as well. <laughs> it does. You're yeah. right. Because oh, at one point he, he smashes yeah. a vase over his mother's head, and he's like, "Oh no, mother! That was your favourite vase. I'm so sorry. I broke it." Yeah. On the arches, yeah. So yeah, I guess the uh, well, the uh, anyone doesn't know the arches is the longest running drama on British radio. I think it's on BBC Radio. Possibly in the world. Probably in the world. It's been on for like fifty odd years. Radio seventy years. Or Radio Four, isn't it, or something like radio that. Radio Four, BBC Radio Four. Yeah. If you ever want to listen to it, he throws them both <laughs> in the basement. As you listen to us rather than the Archers, obviously. I mean, those are the Archers, that shit. Yeah, you're missing about 70 years of back plot as well, really, yeah, to be yeah. fair. <laughs> if you start now. I, I yeah, imagine. well, Mike, no one who's alive at the start of the Archers is watching, is listening to it now. Yeah, they are. I shan't imagine. Just can't. about. If they started listening now and they were 10, they're 80 now. Yeah, there's plenty of 80 year olds about. There is, but they, that audience is going to die off, Mike. It's not a sustainable thing. You need to introduce new characters, new plot lines. I imagine the plot's not that thick that it's quite easy to get into. <laughs> yeah, if it's about a farm, isn't it? And if you haven't got quite... to watch, listen to the whole backlog of 70 years, I, I should imagine you should be able to pick it up. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, with all due respect, who gives two flying fucks about the archers? <laughs> no one listens to it anymore. No, no. They only keep it going because it's a British institution, like the monarchy. <laughs> Anywho. Anywho. He gets him in the basement and then goes to see a creepy, let's say German, although he claims to be Latvian, vet. But he's definitely a Nazi because he has a swash sticker in the background. No, it's on his, on his top, wasn't oh, it? It's, it's literally, he's got a vet and he's got a certain white surgeon's coat on, but underneath, the arm is ripped and underneath you can see a, a swash sticker armband, which for some reason... He's kept on. <laughs> Underneath his... I don't know why. Well, he's obviously a proud Nazi, isn't he? Well, clearly. Well, that he's after some sedatives, Abs- isn't he? Absconded yeah. to New Zealand. <laughs> Hiding out there. Project Paperclip, my friend. Yeah. I don't understand why he thinks sedatives work on these zombies. Well, I think he just thinks, like, well, well, I don't what do I need? Sedatives? Yeah, what, what does he think they are? Does he think they're zombies? You don't really know what he believes do you so I know he's the stove the fucking heads in when he had the chance I know that much mother or not mm. <laughs> I'd have chucked him down the basement and then called the doctor at this point and then just you know let him deal with it yeah I'd have maybe called police Police and a doctor, yeah. I think. I'd have certainly gone with the police as my first point but then again the who's going to believe you in this scenario, well, I've said like I've I've had to lock these crazy people in my basement because they're fucking. Yeah, but the nurse's head hanging off. I don't think I'll tell them that yeah, information. Yes, as soon as yes, yeah. we open the door, they're, they're going to see for themselves, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I just I, I'd try and draw them in somehow. Yeah. You may want to bring some guns. I've got to. My mum's gone mad and she's attacked the nurse, and now she's gone mad too, kind of thing. Yeah. And I've locked them in my basement. Listen. They're armed, heavily armed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. However, this crazy Nazi vet goes, oh, I don't have sedatives, I'm a vet. I've got tranquilizers though. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I'll have that. that Give me that. Do. Give me that. And he just decides he's going to trank these zombies up. He's going to keep them in the basement, tranked up, and hope that they rot away before anyone really notices, even though the nurse has gone missing. And presumably she's got a family who will to notice where she's gone. The hospital should certainly notice where she's gone because she's just vanished. So he tranks them up and then cooks some dinner, doesn't he? That's the weird thing. It's not just that, though. It's the way he tranquilises them. Well, his mother in particular. He sticks this big, great syringe right up her nose, like, so right into her brain, like, through her, no- through her nostril, basically. Not just once. <laughs> and the best of it is, though, he then sort of, like... She gets out, doesn't she? He goes to see Fakita at the yeah. shop. And the mother gets out, wakes up and gets out again, doesn't she? Yeah. yeah. And after, this is just after the, the grand, Bakita's grandmother's given Lon the magic necklace because he is literally surrounded by death. Both figuratively, magically and literally surrounded mm. by death. 
His mother's stumbling around, obviously, knowing I know where he is. <laughs> He's obviously going to see that tar. She gets hit by a tram and flung through the shop window. <laughs> and, of course, everyone runs in. Oh, she's clearly dead. <laughs> yeah. Right? She's got to be dead. They don't know she's a zombie. And Lionel's like, oh, yeah, she's dead. Yeah, Shit. she lands at the feet of Lionel, doesn't it? Mm. And then he, he tranquilises her again. Yeah. Up her nostril again. <laughs> because the... And then he cuts to the church then. We cut to the church. There's a funeral and the one bloke's like, oh, she was a picture of health. The one who was eating the uh, custard. <laughs> well, he thinks he's out of the war. He's like, oh, yeah, she was a pastor on last Friday. She was a picture of health. Oh, she clearly wasn't, mate. <laughs> her fucking ear fell yeah. off into her custard. He's not very observant, that guy, is he? <laughs> no, no, he's really not. not. Lionel's late, and he, cause, mainly because he has to run to the, the undertakers and, and, and drank her again because she's going to wake up during the funeral. Uh, but the embalming machine's in left on. The embalmer's <laughs> forgot he's left it on. And this is ten minutes before the fucking funeral, so he's a quality embalmer. <laughs> oh, yeah. His assistant's like buggered off for a bit, and she's about to have a cranial blowout, <laughs> as he describes it. <laughs> I thought she was... And the service has started while Lionel's trying to fuck around in there. And this, the, then a, a, oh, a fucking head explodes. <laughs> Eyes pop out every. <laughs> he pops her eyes back in. They take the body to the f- to the, the church for the service. Kept in the the old sort of room behind. Obviously, the doors are going to open. And she's going to the coffins to come out. Wouldn't you just stove her fucking head in by now? <laughs> I'd have made sure she was burned. Mm. And yeah, not buried exactly. They say she's getting buried. But he tries to open the coffin, doesn't he? He tries to open the coffin to trank her again. She wakes <laughs> up, falls through him in, in an embrace as he manages to jab the needle in through the window. Oh, Everyone no, thinks he's now shagging his dead mum. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, in the scuffle, he's managed to tranquilise yep. her again, nostrally fucking inserted again. Mm-hmm. So obviously when they, when they both lie on lying on the floor, she's out of cold again, so everyone just thinks he's fucking going nuts, not dealing with the death of his mum very well. Yeah. Kind of thing. They're all going, oh, poor lad. He's not dealing with it very well, is he? <laughs> no. Yeah. I've seen some displays of grief in my time, but <laughs> not quite like that. Uncle Les is at the funeral. Uncle Les looks sleazy. Do he? Yes. yes. I, 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 what did I write for Uncle Les? Hold on. I put sleazy, sleazy sleazy and creepy uncle turns up clearly after after the money that's what I've put that, yep. that was what I put the, that first bit he was like uh, I get your game <laughs> <laughs> but no as we mentioned as Claire said instead of having his mother be- cremated like any sane person would in this scenario uh, nah, he has a buried and he goes to dig into the fucking grave at night <laughs> To trank her again. Hey, who's, how long is he going to do this for? Oh, no. How long has he got to keep this going? How's he? He's not thinking this through. <laughs> no, he's not. He's, not. he's really not. He's clearly not thinking straight, is he? Let's face I mean, it. Okay, he might be grieving. This she's not grieving because she's alive. <laughs> well, not really. Well, he surely, still thinks he is. Mm. But surely this would be a tough time for anybody, wouldn't it? So you can kind of understand you got to give him a bit of slack, but still it is dumb as fuck. I mean, yeah. no one in what their is, right mind would think that, would what's they? What's his long-term game here? Go to the churchyard every night, dig his mum up, trank her and rebury her. That's going to get a bit awkward at some point, isn't it? At some point someone's going to notice you, and people are going to start asking questions like, Paquita is going to start asking questions like, Lionel, why are you going there every night with that shovel? <laughs> Maybe the film was called Brain Dead. Not because of the zombags, mm. but because of Lionel That's himself. About the, was Frank, the Frank Spencer of New Zealand, yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Someone does point, notice him. Someone does notice him already. On the first night, he's noticed <laughs> by a bunch of. I'm going to describe them as street punks. I just put bullies. <laughs> bullies? <laughs> bullies. They all have leather jackets on, so I'm assuming yeah. they're punks. Yeah. But they all look about 30. That's don't they? They do. <laughs> and they're all drinking. They're not kids, are they? No. <laughs> They're all drinking in a churchyard like we used to do when we were like fucking yeah. 15 but all these guys are 30 and <laughs> it's all a bit creepy. Now at this point, I, I, I ran out of, I didn't have time to write down and say what happened. Well. But this guy's, they start on beating Lionel up. Well, at least start, the one of them starts pissing, pissing on, on the grave. grave, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. His hand, her hand shoots up, <laughs> grabs his dick and balls, presumably, <laughs> yanks him face down onto the coffin and then proceeds to, I'm going to say, eviscerate him. Munch him. There's blood going mm. everywhere. 
Yeah. Looks like his belly's in a blender. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It looks like yeah. he's fucking it, doesn't it? Because his arse is going up and down like, yeah. on the soil. And I guess so. He's just well. There's blood everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> This kind of sets the tone for the gore. Yeah. And um, she throws the body onto the other guys. Yeah. yeah he turns into a right. zombie. She bites another guy. He turns into a zombie. That's right. Basically, it becomes a zombie fest then. You've then got like and three the, zombies. And the priest comes out, doesn't he? He does. The vicar appears as the zombie mom. The zombie mom starts infecting everyone. And he says, time, get the way, boy. Time for a little divine intervention. I kick ass for the Lord. Oh, I, was say, I, I, I that love that. the priest. Yeah. <laughs> Karate priest. Yeah. I kick ass for the Lord. And he doesn't use his hands, he's just kicking zombies to death. Yeah. Kicking. Limbs going. At one point, he's beating zombies to death with their own arms, legs, there's heads coming off. But sadly, as one, he kicks a head clean off. It falls down onto his shoulder and bites oh, him because yeah. you've got to destroy the brain. Yeah. Zombie heads are still dangerous. Yep. Yeah. Decapitated zombies aren't aren't dead. No. No. He then sort of stumbles about, falls off a wall, lands and impaled on a statue. I do love how he was loving it at the time, though. Oh God, he loved it. He loved it. He loved kicking ass a lot. <laughs> yeah. He really did. He, but then Lionel decides he's going to take him home because he's infected. <laughs> and he ends up with feeding zombies at a dinner table with tranquilizer and what looks like some kind of, I don't know. Mac and cheese, I think. Mac right? and cheese with some chunks of spam. I like it when he pulls back the, the one zombie's head and like tips them down there. Yeah, yeah. the nurse zombie who's yeah. just, <laughs> just feeding them in the throat because it's all leaking. For the... You can tell this had a higher budget than bad taste. Yeah. Three million. Three million. It was meant to be four and a half and got cut. Yeah. Well, the best of it is when a priest dies, he apparently becomes really horny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she's brought back as an agent of the devil, I guess that's how it works. I don't know, is it? The zombies mm. agents of the devil. When, you know, when, when hell is full, the dead will rise. Do they, do they come into that scenario? Or are they just infected? Just I guess they're just infected, aren't they? Mm. Well, well. Well, well in, in comes the... Uh, Zombies are horny, uncle. apparently. Well, yeah. the creepy uncle comes back in, doesn't he? He, he does. He what? takes a piss and passes a kidney stone. Or yeah. Something. That was an odd really thing to put in. He doesn't know about the zombies at this point. But then, but then they start hearing the sexy noises. Yeah. And then, and then he's like, oh, don't go in there, don't go in there. And, and the, the uncle's like, oh, I see, you found your dad, dad's collection. The old stag movies. Yeah, yeah. Is that the one with the donkey in the chamber, mate? Yeah. So, so he kind of like, all right, I'll leave you to it then, mate. Because he wants to come in and watch and presumably masturbate with him. Because yeah. he's, like, he's like, oh, sorry, some things a man needs to do on his own, eh? Yeah. He's like, oh, you want to go in and watch? You're going to sit here with me and watch? Uh, with your nephew? With your nephew. But this is when you discover that, because I thought it sounded like an orgy, then the door opens and it wasn't quite an orgy, but the nurse and the... The, the priest is getting it on. Getting it on, yeah. But the zombies are horny. Yeah, but hungry at the same time. And then the nurse is like instantly pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, the priest gets his face bit off during that, as I remember. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they yeah. pull it out of her mouth, didn't they? Yeah. He then breaks up with Fakita again, because she comes around the house and says, you weren't at the funeral, you didn't come see me. Fakita now. <laughs> Sorry, go. No. He says it. Her name's changed again. Oh, yeah, Paquita. Paquita. I, I wrote fuck eater on all my notes. Because <laughs> <laughs> I thought, well, you know what, I'm going to keep going. Just roll with it. Just roll with it. <laughs> She's fuck eater now. I'm a professional. They've banned at this point, too, remember? She gave herself up very quickly to Lionel on the strength of those tarot cards. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. The night her mum was, his mum was kind of turning, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. He was banging away. Lucky man. A zombie nurse. The zombie nurse giving birth. We've got a zombie baby. Oh, it's creepy. Yeah. It's kind of in the stereo, isn't it? And he pulls it out and it's eating a rat. <laughs> it's got a yeah. rat in its hand. I thought it was quite cute. <laughs> oh, no, it looks awful. It looks slimy. He just puts a bucket yeah. on it and then for some reason decides, you know what? I should really take the baby out for some fresh air. <laughs> and just so takes, take to the park. takes it out of a pram. Yeah. I mean, why? <laughs> why? 
He's got barbed wire covering the gap. What's he have to say? Some mother at some point, someone at some point is meant to come over and say, oh, can, oh what a little cutie pie, you know, as people tend to do with babies. Mm -hmm. And this thing's, he's, uh, what's with the barbed wire? And then this thing's where he's leap at them trying to eat their nose. <laughs> I mean, what the hell? Why are you even taking them out? <laughs> I, know. I don't get it. It's just for the slapstick, in it? This is, I think, this is actually a really unnecessary part of the film. <laughs> until it gets to the part where he's beating the shit out of the baby and everyone's watching and at the time I know that sounds awful but it is a doll <laughs> yeah and he stuffs it in the bag doesn't he yeah. he's like it's hyperactive <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's hit it against the, the swings and things like that and, <laughs> and actually he's, threw a swing he's like holding it. it by the foot and punching <laughs> it in the face he's like yeah alright that but the whole bit with the pram and all that was a bit unnecessary for me I was, I was like oh come on this is so I think I deep down I think this film's too long. Okay, mm. that's my thing with it. And Fakita has moved on from from Lionel now because Lionel's a crazy person. Everyone thinks he's having sex with bodies. So she's gone to dating Roger, the delivery boy, who was apparently really boring. And just talks about football. Or yeah, something. rugby. Yeah. I think it is. How was it? Yeah. Rugby or Aussie rules, possibly. Uh, this is, they play. Oh, no, probably rugby. You're right because it's New Zealand. Yeah. It? Uncle Les is back. He's mm -hmm. come to the house and he's found out that Lionel is collecting bodies. And he's like, I don't know what you're doing with them. I don't care, but I'm going to call the police because I'm an accessory now. Because mm -hmm. he's only seen them tracked up, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah that's he, it. He, he just assumes they're dead bodies. He yeah. thinks he's darmoring this shit. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> darmoring this shit. I think darmoring should be a verb <laughs> when you keep <laughs> bodies around. <laughs> One that we hope is not used very often. No, but I still think it should be a thing. <laughs> I'm going to write to the Oxford Dictionary people and ask them about it. Darmering. Then we should do darmering. To yeah. darm or something. Yeah. To keep the heads of uh, victims whilst the rest of the body is dipped in acid. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh, gross. Anyway, Les calls the police and he's like, I, I want police. Probably thought that he'd set up multiple murders here because he thinks that I was killed but he's keeping the bodies around. Or he's into some weird necrophiliac <laughs> shit. But Either way, he's using it as an excuse to get the house and the money in it. He wants the money in the house. He's blackmailing him. Yep. Like Lionel gives it up. Lionel very, gives it up. I, I don't know because I guess now they're Uncle Leslie's problem. Yeah. <laughs> Even though for some reason Lionel's still living in the house personally, I'd have, just, I'd have gone to the bank first thing in the morning took as much money out of the fucking account as I could, leaving Uncle Les with just the house, and fucked off with Fuckita. It's personally what I'd have done. I'd have pushed him down there. Now, yeah. your problem now, Uncle Les. Oh, you'd have pushed him down the stairs into the basement. I thought he was going to push him down there, yeah. And then you do become the murderer. Yeah, no, Lionel hasn't, kill, Lionel hasn't killed anybody. No, 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 you're not killing anybody. They're going to kill him. <laughs> you're creating the scenario and we're going to kill him Mike that's morally Ooh, still wrong that's like, like having a pack of, like, like a, I don't know a pack of fucking wolves he's blackmailing and then the like kicking someone into their den and going oh I didn't know Finn it was the wolves that killed him <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no blood on my hands there's plenty of blood on your hands you're responsible for a man's death he's blackmailing me so I didn't kill that he's man he's trying to rape my girlfriend he yeah. hasn't done that yet not yet but I can tell <laughs> He's a type. That's a good job. You're not a fucking judge, isn't it? He looks like a rapist. Off to jail. Do you want to look at the DNA, Judge Martin? Nah, nah, he looks the type. <laughs> His eyes are too close together. <laughs> He's got a monobro and a missing tooth. Send him down. <laughs> Death is penalty. That, isn't that how the law works? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's great at this point is a bunch of Uncle Les's mates just turn up, even though Les has only lived in the house for five minutes. Literally, literally five, five minutes. minutes. And then like, a bunch of his mates turn up bringing beer. He's like, oh, we thought we'd come and celebrate your new party, mate. Your new pad. Yeah, and just before that, Lionel's give all the zombies animal nitrate, isn't it? Animal stimulant. Thinking he was poisoning them yeah. to kill them outright. Yeah. Now there's that point. No, he's decided to do it, but the party's in full swing when he when he's doing it. Uh, Just something to poison them for some reason. Stove their heads in, Lionel. You know it's gonna work. You can't them poison in the them. Stick them on the Barbie. Whatever, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
yeah. New Zealand, not Australia. While this party's on, obviously Lionel's going around serving food to him now because okay. he's a bit of a pussy with the booker, isn't he? Yeah. He has a really just redeem himself by having a fight with with Uncle Les. Mm. Yeah, he probably hit him around the face, didn't he? Oh, he does. He you know, have a proper fight with him. For Keita goes past this house where, where this party's going on. Like, what the fuck's Lionel doing? He's broke up with me. He's gone mad. Now he's having a party. He's spending all that money that he's inherited without me. <laughs> yeah, she bursts in, doesn't she? And sort of. She does, but she also finds out after you no know, Les tries to no. He, he comes on to us. He straight comes away. on to us straight away, doesn't he? Knees him in the bollocks. Yeah. Everyone leaves Les in the bollocks yeah, in this film. Yeah. I think it's five times or something. At least something like that. Les tries to rape her. That's that's pretty fucking grim. Yeah, that's pretty She dark. escapes and gets into the into the basement, doesn't she? Mm-hmm. And she says, you know, like Lionel finds her down there. She's like, you know, you've got to fucking sort this out. The zombies get free, don't they, while Lionel's down there. All hell breaks loose. And all hell breaks loose because Lionel using the magic necklace, like, oh my god! Someone opens a door for him just at the right moment. It does protect him. Yeah. They break out. And this is like a free-for-all kind of zombie orgy fest. Yeah, they go upstairs. They're taking over the party. Everyone's a zombie. Yeah, they're the ripping wolf. guys. Rib cage out. Faces being ripped off. Rip off. Hearts <clears throat> being ripped out. And shown to the woman. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty grim. Rips the flesh of a guy's legs off. Yeah. They're stuck in that little... Someone, someone's entire body, like in, inner organs and everything, all flops out. Yeah, yeah. As it becomes like a living thing in itself. Zombie it, intestines. Lo- yeah. It's intestines. The lungs, intestine monster. Everything. <laughs> Zombies give no fucks. Mm. The less proves himself to be a badass zombie killer. He does. He does get a redemption arc in the final act. Nearly. Yeah. Mm. You know, he's having a fight with a zombie priest. He's pulling that fucker's teeth out. <laughs> I love yeah. that bit. I get the feeling Uncle Les might be a war veteran because yeah. he's, he's, he's quite calculated in this and he's he's probably of the right age. He's starting to nine years after his prime. He's put a lot of weight on. you got a nasty plaque problem there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> bit of a cavity, mate. <laughs> yeah, he's pulling his fucker's teeth out and you're like, whoa. And he's a dab hand with secateurs. He's like cutting zombies' fucking heads off with them. Like the priest, he's he's embracing the zombie apocalypse, isn't he? As well, he is. He's short of the dead in this. Yeah. The bit I particularly liked was with the blonde woman that was screaming as she was witnessing somebody get zombied, mm. killed, or whatever. And as she screams, she put her face out, hands over her face, and the next thing you know, a zombie comes from behind and sticks his hand through the back of her head yeah. and her, and its hand just comes out of her mouth. Yes. And it's like... <laughs> and it, oh, it's, it's brilliant. I think it's so unexpected. And again, that was a moment where Claire went... Oh! You can see the knuckles underneath the, underneath the skin as it come, oh. Out, oh, it come through the face. No, that was a different one. Oh. I like the bit where the zombie intestines is admiring itself in the mirror. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's creating its own eyes at the top of the esophagus yeah. somehow. Even zombie intestines want to eat you. Yeah. Lionel manages to escape. Paquita goes one way, he goes the other. She ends up with a girl who's been bit but is still okay. She hasn't turned. She doesn't turn very quickly. No. I guess she's only got a little scratch. And even uh, he, he, the, ma- the magic necklace points to a trunk in the uh, in the attic. And it's his dad's. And you end up with this weird scenario here where he goes to and he finds these pictures of his dad with another woman and then her body at the bottom of the trunk. And it turns out that his mum might have a few secrets that she's mm. been keeping. A few skeletons in the closet. Almost literally. Mm. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And Fakita's fighting the baby at this point, tries to put it in a blender, but it flies out, hits less in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Intestine monster goes for Lionel's nuts as well. Yep. Tries to pull him back. He's hanging from the ceiling, bursts through. He's dangling there. Leslie's like, oh, you fucking loser. <laughs> Pushes him a bit. He manages to climb his way up, get his foot free. Leslie's a fucking zombie killer machine at this point. He's got yeah. knives. He is hacking, Please. slashing. He's pushing one through a fucking mangle, for Christ's sake. <laughs> yeah. And so the baby comes back. He's like, I'm going to get you, you little fucker. Mm. Getting that baby zombie. Lures him down to the basement where the four zombies that Lionel thinks he's killed and is buried come back. 
And Lionel's mum has definitely mutated. Yep. She rips Uncle Les's head off and the spine, doesn't she? Yeah. yeah. See it in the silhouette. She makes him some kind of weird fucking scorpion zombie yeah. with a head for a tail. He gets... And Lionel manages to get outside. He finds his trusty lawnmower. This is when he becomes the Knight of Swords. Because <laughs> he has two blades on that lawnmower. Sort of straps it to himself, doesn't he? And he's just like... He's just going through him, isn't he? Yeah. You've got a lawnmower and you're surrounded by zombies and you've got a lawnmower strapped to your chest. Mm-hmm. 300 litres of fake blood was used in this scene. Yeah. That is mental, isn't it? I mean, I can't describe it, love you. There's blood everywhere. This is, it's Body just, parts everywhere, flying. It's limbs, there's hands. There's, there's, oh, it's just <laughs> crazy. A lot of blamange as well. A lot of blamange. Yeah. Is that your verdict? Blood, blood, blood. Blamange. <laughs> and he kills them all, doesn't he? He kills all the party goals who've turned... Apart from Les. Apart from Les. What happens to Les? Paquita finishes him up, yeah. does she? holds his spine, swings it around and smashes it on the side. On it the just, side of his head, it yeah. explodes, doesn't it? Then the baby literally births itself through the girl who's been... The girl who been bitten is, like, next to Paquita. And the baby literally comes back and births itself through her face. Yeah. That's quite grim. That was pretty grim. <laughs> then she rides her, like, a meat puppet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, controlling her. See how I describe that? Yeah. It is. It's grim. That is a grim scene. Yeah. Finally, Lionel kills the intestine monster after Bakita snatched the necklace back. Because that necklace is earning its fucking pay here. It is. If you ask me. I wouldn't let it out my sight. I'd never let that necklace out my sight. Ever. I know they throw it away at the end. It's, yeah. look, it's gold and silver and a big ruby in it. Probably worth more than the house. I'm just, that thing's like kept me safe here. Yeah. I'm not throwing it away. Never. Then we say hello to Lionel's mutated mom, who's kind of I want to say like a giant weird human rat monkey hybrid. Well, it's funny because Tips they're nice. about they're about to kind of leave, and the uh, Keita's trying to say, "Come on, let's go," and he goes, "But well, hold on, we haven't seen mum yet." Yeah, it's true. And then that's when she Burst appears. Through the floor, yeah. She's huge. The yeah. place is on fire. They get to the highest point. Do you want to think that Lionel's mum's mutated monkey hybrid was thick? <laughs> she had a thick ass. Oh, huge uh, ass. Huge big titties. The tits weren't great, but the <laughs> ass... Wow. <laughs> tits weren't great. They were as big as fucking about three heads, weren't they? They were massive. Yeah, but they were dangling. Yeah, them. they weren't exactly what you'd call <laughs> per and fur, were they, Mike? <laughs> No, they're big. Biggest <laughs> titties I've ever seen. Imagine trying to chew on one of those nipples. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that ass. Oh, what mm. ass. He's like, she's like, huge, naked, come to mommy Lionel. <laughs> Burst to the fucking roof. He says, look, I know what happened. You killed my dad and you killed his shag piece. You drowned him in the bath. And you made, I saw it. And you told me this tale that, about me. I, I know you lied to me. I know that my dad didn't drown or save me from the pier. You killed people. Mm-hmm. And then he gets absorbed by her stomach, reingested into her womb in many ways. Yeah. Well, I think that was the idea of that, wasn't no it? No one will yeah. ever love you like your mother. <laughs> Until Lionel cuts his way out with the magic necklace, again working its fucking magic here overtime, working overtime, this necklace is. Yeah. It's the unsung hero of this film. Well, it's quite spiky at the end. So it is. You know. It's very pointy. The house is obviously on fire. The fire brigade turn up in their 1950s gear. That's a classic time. All they need is a fucking Dalmatian there. Didn't they? That's all they need. I don't get it. Dalmatians were fire, fire dogs. dogs. Oh, were they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that what they were bred for? Well, no, but they were used, uh, utilised that way. I don't know. Yeah. It's something about they're not fr- they don't freak out with the, the sirens and the bells. And they didn't have long hair either, mm-hmm. so singed things like that would have been a lot less. I and never they, knew that. And they could keep up with the really primitive fire engines at the mm. time. You wouldn't want to use a husky in a fire. No. Would you or, a, no. or an alley? No, you wouldn't. No, no you wouldn't want to use an Alsatian either. No. But all their airs would get sinned straight away. They used to be they? bored all the time. Mm. Poor little sausages. Exactly. I just, they, I just thought they made nice coats. <laughs> Who are you, Criella <laughs> DeVille? <laughs> 
<laughs> I had a hundred and one damnations for Christmas, don't you know? Have you seen my coat? <laughs> see my vest, see my vest, but it's a real villain chest. The Simpsons, yeah. Mr. Burns, the London Two Greyhounds mm. episode. Uh, it's one of the best songs in, mm. after the Stonecutters. It's the best Simpsons mm. song. Mm. Yes, the house is on fire, burning all the evidence conveniently. I'm presuming a massive insurance payout for Lionel. Who, uh, for some reason, throws the necklace away. Presumably because it's like, I've got my woman, the zombies are all dead, I don't they, need yeah, no... Yeah, they get down off the off the roof. His mum goes into the fiery flames. Yeah, all Lionel's the evidence is burnt. Yep. And then he kisses her and the movie ends. I think you'd be a person of interest to the police, though, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think the insurance companies are definitely going to want a word with him. like 40 young people just disappear overnight. Yeah. Like, well, they'll find all the child remains. Mm. Yeah. They're, yeah. That's going to be an issue. Yeah. He like, should have held on like, to that thing, really, shouldn't he? Should have. <laughs> he might have been out of help in court. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to prison for a long time. Yes, yes he is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Could you blame it all on the uncle? wasn't my house, mate. It's my uncle's. Ah, but they... Uh, so, yeah. Uh, then, but there's a money go to then. signed it over yet, had he? We don't know if he signed it over or not. Mm. There could have been a, a day or two in between scenes there, because it just... That's some artistic licence, but it's, it's... You know, maybe. Mm. Maybe. And the movie ends, and obviously that's the most fake blood ever used. It's considered a classic. It's got a 7.5 rating on IMDb. If you've been watching it with us, listen, or decide you want to go and watch us, watch it, let us know... What, what your score is I give it a 6.8 I prefer bad taste hmm what are you going mm. with Mike I'll go for a 7.1 I'm going for a 6 it's still not that good <laughs> I go for a 7.2 mm. but and I think it's I do prefer bad taste personally as well just because of the absolute, like the magnitude of what they managed to do with mm. that film, oh, was yeah. the fact Impressive. that it took them two years, the continuity of yeah. two years of filming to keep their hair and their beards and things like that, their clothes, everything like that. There was no obvious continuity errors within that film. No, thirty grand budget. Amazing. That's what was the budget. Thirty grand. This is it. Amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. Whereas this, much bigger budget. Hundred times. Yeah, three million pound budget, dollar budget, but even still, with the budget they had, they did a hell of a lot with that. Oh movie. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it it clearly taught him a lot. It clearly taught Peter Jackson a lot because he's become one of the the biggest, most famous. Well, he went and did well. He did Lord of the Rings. I mean, Lord that was the like the biggest that's, films that's of their era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like. But he doesn't use those effects in Lord of the Rings that much. No, but which is yeah, they're they're quite. You know, people die obviously, but they're what twelve in the UK, mm. Tw- for ages twelve and up. Lord of the Rings. He didn't need to use those mm. kind of effects then. No, he didn't. I know he's. But they um, wanted to give this a fifteen in Britain. Really? Mm. Yeah, because they found it the gore humorous rather than disturbing. Mm. But in the end, they decided so, they would give it an eighteen. Brain dead. Mm. Yeah, because they just thought they'd have too many complaints otherwise. Yeah. yeah. But it was going to be a 15, yeah. No, I think they're both they're both brilliant films. They're very nostalgic to me. I watched them when I was very young. I was probably only 10 when I mm. watched Bad Taste and probably not much older when I watched Brain Dead. You so. know, when I was a teen and I discovered this film, I watched it a lot and I probably watched it to death a little bit. Mm. And I must admit, I was like, oh, Brain Dead. I've seen that film a lot. Mm-hmm. But I thought, no, no, I'll watch it. It's been a while since I've seen it in full. And I did enjoy it. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed it. But it's like, it's too long. There's certain scenes that can be cut. Yeah. Take some, you know, get get to the point. And it's good. You could have shaved 20 minutes at this Have film. the baby escape instead. And have just the, go and find the baby. Don't have causing... that little park bit with the baby. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like that, though. It's silly, but I like it. You could it still didn't have do... it, but they, yeah. could have, they could have taken three or four minutes off of him walking around with the pram and yeah, and trying to chikoo bit with it. Yeah, yeah. He could. They could have just gone That's straight one... to 
The baby's escaped. Where, oh, it's at the park, because where would a baby go? That's just one scene, you know. There, there's a few others where it could yeah. have been short. And the it's... acting was pretty bad. In... Yeah, yeah, but I great. expect that. I mean, he's a £3 million budget. It's all going on the gore, hasn't it? Yeah, he's not He's not paid much for no. actors at all. They've, all. they've all had a nice day out and a free lunch. And yeah. We, we could have acted it. this movie out, in all fairness. Yeah. You know, it's it, with, our, with our abilities, we could have acted this movie out... <laughs> Maybe we should. Maybe we should. Maybe we should do some kind of movie homage. But it did not do well at the box office. Uh, I'd imagine it didn't. Less than quarter of a million yeah. in the US. Worldwide? Well, the US box office is it was less than quarter well, of a million. Look dollars. at, look at the yeah. release it would have had as well. I mean, it's not going to be a major... It's not going to be in every cinema, oh, is it? It wouldn't have been in cinemas as such, would it? Oh, it was massive in New Zealand. Well, yeah. It did better than Batman Returns at the time. No way. Yeah. Well, I love Batman Returns. It's a good film, but yeah, this is well. It's a New Zealand film, isn't it? Yeah. The accents are, you know, a bit of a put off, I guess, to American audiences. There is that. They can't understand them, can they? They can't understand accents. No. You guys are talking about the translation of the the gore comedy and things comedy like that. gore to American audience, but because Claire pointed out, you you've got Evil Dead, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. but. That's only got a certain kind of following. There's not a lot of people don't like those kind of films because they're a bit oh it's just gross or oh, I don't like that. There's a lot of people that have that opinion of the Evil Dead, and it's only people that are sick in the head like us lot <laughs> that quite enjoy that kind of shit. I like the second Evil Dead, but I prefer the third. Army of Darkness. Yeah, I prefer Army of Darkness. I like Army of Darkness. Yeah, yeah it's but good. you think how many? thousands and thousands and thousands of movies that get made fucking over the decades. Oh, look at that. How many of them are these comedy gross out? Yeah, I mean, like most that? Just... Not many at all. It's such a small amount, isn't there? Well, I think and there is quite a few, but they don't, they don't make it big, do they? This is my point. No, yeah. They never make it no. big. Evil Dead, they were an exception. And I think that's more so because of Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell. And Sam Sam Rami went on to do the Spider Man film as well, didn't he? Yeah. Yes. So he, he got so I've also gone through his back catalogue again. He's had some decent films over the years to be fair, Sam Ra- Sam Raimi. Mm. Not Sam Rami. <laughs> Sam <laughs> Raimi. He's had some decent films of this. So people look at his back catalogue a bit more. But then again you can say the same Peter Jackson, I guess that's some I, I guarantee you this film's made more since he had Lord of the Rings than it did when he first released it. I guarantee that. Well, this is the thing. It's made more money than Lord of the Rings. No, I guarantee it's made more since Lord of the Rings was released. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, you, you say the box office of it, yeah, it was only yeah. quarter of a million. But I guarantee it's made its money back. On DVD now sales. Yeah, yeah. You know DVD what I mean? Sales. It's made money off that film yeah. now. It's you, a bit of a cult look, classic, isn't it? He'll look back at that and go, fuck me, at the time I was sweating. Yeah. If I could have seen 20, 30 years into the future... I'd have been so fucking... I wouldn't have worried a bit. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because at the time, he's put three million into this movie, mm-hmm. or well, his, investors have, his investors have, his investors have, and it's only bought back a quarter of a million so far, and he's like, oh, shit, they're never going to let me work again. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> I love at the start of the film, we had the national anthem with the Queen on a horse looking resplendent. Mm. Yeah. I'd have banged the Queen at she, that point. She in the was film. hot in that era, though. I always good. said she was, she was really pretty. She yeah. was when she was younger. In that, in that red coat. Oof. Even in the 70s, I would have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, on that bombshell. Well, that's been Brain Dead. Happy New Year for the coming, because you'll hear this New Year's Eve ish, or New Year's Day. Thank you for listening. Thank you for continuing to listen. And have a good year. And, and t- tell a friend. Tell several friends. Ask, just accost random people and put us into their phones so they have no <laughs> choice but to listen to us. Don't hurt them anyway. Just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're not just, inciting violence. No, no, we're not inciting violence. Just say, hey, I've got a great podcast you can listen to and just take their phone off them. Tranquilise them. Stick it up their nose. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You've been, you... you've been brainwashed by brain dead. No, uh, that's the way you speak to people, Mike. That's why you can't go in public anymore. Uh, that's why you've got the tag. That'll be why. <laughs> Remind me to lock the cage <laughs> yeah. tonight. Yeah, yeah, we'll do. <laughs> <laughs> that's how he got out. <laughs> oh, I know, I'm you know. There's a full moon as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been Mike. Thanks for listening. Peace out. May the force be with you. And I'll be there. Happy New Year to everybody and keep listening in 2023. Bye.
and I've been Pete. Wonderful 2022. Let's hope 2023 is so much fucking better. <laughs>